Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. That's Christy Lemire, Hi. that's Alonzo Duraldi, I am Matt Atchity. They are gonna talk about Thoroughbreds, which screened uh, Monday night. I didn't see it because I had cool shit to do. So uh, why don't you Ooh. tell us about it? Thoroughbreds is cool shit too, I liked it a lot. <laughs> so um, Anya Taylor-Joy and Olivia Cook star as teenagers in a very opulent Connecticut suburb. They never say the word Greenwich, but that's clearly what they're aiming for here. Um, they were really good friends when they were little girls and they grew apart and have now reconnected as seniors in high school. Anya Taylor-Joy um, is so brilliant that she got to finish boarding school early and has come back home. Olivia Cook has had a really scandalous tragedy occur with her horse and is catching up with schoolwork and needs a tutor. And so the two of them who are very, very different reconnect and find that perhaps they are not so different after all. Take a look. I don't have any feelings, ever. And that doesn't necessarily make me a bad person. It just means I have to work a little harder to be good. I'm sending you to boarding school. After that, you're off my payroll. You hate him. You despise him. Honey, <laughs> you can't go in looking like that. I'm fine. Let me just... I'm not gonna have to stand here all day like a robot, repeating myself. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. You ever think about just killing him? How would you? So I dug this. Okay. I, saw this I saw this four months ago and um, rewatched it again. And everything I loved about it, I love even more. Mm -hmm. um, it is. It's a it's a lot like Heather's. It's got like the the delicious oh. bitchiness of Heather's, but also like the 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 tonal restraint and like the structural rigidity of like a Yorgos Lanthimos movie. Wow. Yes. Okay. You're, no, the you're, way it's shot. Yeah. I, the use of symmetry and rack focus and the tracking shots is definitely going for like a shining thing with the tracking uh, shots in the hallways of this mansion. Uh, it's so tense. I think the the, he the, the, he the Heather's comparison feels a little. Uh, lazy. To it's me. a lot. They're like using Heather's. it in the marketing. I, I was I was thinking that it's more like, and it's not nearly as good as the description I'm about to say, but it's it to me it was more like Whit Stillman's Heavenly Creatures. Yeah, I see that comparison <laughs> last year. But there's like a, a knowing kind of meanness that is darkly funny that I, reminded me sure, a lot of Heather's. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, they, this is a movie that is that is trying to like give you a kind of chilly style and stuff. It felt super stagey to me, both in the in terms of how much. The movie boils down to like a series of conversations, usually indoors, but also it ha it has a very playwrighty kind of thing of like, here's a character with a secret, and we're going to find out what it is. <laughs> oh, and here's a character that you didn't know a secret, but now we're going to find out what that is. And it's just like you know, it, but, it's, but, but they're interesting, isn't it? Okay, they're, yeah, they're okay, but I, I don't know. I. I wanted to like this more. Yeah. I, I I like the two performances. I think they're they're doing interesting stuff, and I did like the sort of the 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 the, the lockdown camera and the the overhead shots and the stuff they're doing to kind of jazz it up. But ultimately, this kind of feels like sort of an empty exercise to me. Oh, it's an exercise know. for sure. Yeah. So Corey Finley, who wrote and directed it, this is his his first film. He is a playwright, uh -huh. and it does feel like a play a lot of the time. But then they use that house and they use the grounds and they use the space around it to not just indicate what kind of world this is and like tear into the toxic heart of the seemingly beautiful, genteel world, but also just to put you on edge. The way they use the shadows and the lighting change as the film goes on to reflect the darkness of each of them as they reveal who their, their true selves are. Like they're, these are women who have been taught to put a certain face forward for their entire lives. And once they finally figure out who they are and reveal how ugly those people really are, it gets kind of interesting and kind of real. It's I, like a, it's a, I found it a little writerly in that they're really announcing some things to you <laughs> in in conversations that seem otherwise banal or whatever. It's sort of like you know uh, certain words that pop up in their like SAT training. Like oh well, that's going to matter <laughs> later, you know. So I don't know. I, you should mention Anton Yelchin. I was going to say this is Anton Yelchin's. I think they, this is his last film. I think it's to the be last. Released. The last one he made before uh, he died in 2016. Yeah. At just 27, he plays the drug dealer yes. who gets drawn into their scheme, and uh, he's really necessary. No, absolutely, <laughs> uh, just to have another voice in there. But, and also uh, just to change things up tonally, because yes. they're both so like 
they are precise, these two young women in their performances. And he is like kind of a wild card. Yeah, he's he the one sort of sloppy person in the movie. And he you brings know. humanity to it. No, it's a good yeah. performance. And it's, you know, it's, it's obviously it's tragic that, that he's not around. Um, but it's, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I appreciate this movie more in theory than in practice, yeah. I think. But obviously, you know, it's it's gonna work for some folks. And, and if this sounds like the kind of thing that you would be into, <laughs> then maybe you will. Yeah, the, um, the, the DP who shot it also shot A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Ah, uh, uh, Vincent. Okay. So yeah, I like this a lot. I like Anya Taylor-Joy a lot. She was so great in The Witch. Mm -hmm. Olivia Cook does this like kind of perfect deadpan thing She's that I, I quite she can good deliver in this, a lot. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I was no fan of me and Earl and the Dying Girl, no. but I like her a lot in this. She's the mm -hmm. Dying Girl. Here she gets to live. Um, yes. Oh, did I spoil something? Anyway, so um, oh, she, does she? Or did I? <laughs> um, yeah, my, my one problem with it is it, it kind of wraps up a little neatly. It kind of just all, very neatly. Yeah, all, it kind of kind of neatly <laughs> in, in like a like with you know hospital what? corners. <laughs> but it like it is cynical. It is like true to its dark cynical sure. vision. It doesn't go nicey nice and soft. No, I, no, I like no, that absolutely. about it. So um, I gave this an eight point eight. Wow. I dug this movie. Right. I had a good time. I gave it a six point six. I think there's a lot of nice pieces to it, but ultimately it just it I I felt uh, you know like I was being played and I could sense that I was being played while I was being played, and that's not fun. There you go, so 7.7 um, <laughs> is our number. It is at 86% on the tomato meter, so I say see it. Bye.